Yo, what's up? Okay, it's the yellow shirt. So you can connect the dots there and see what lessons I'm working on the same day. Uh, lesson 73 is up next, solving compound inequalities. Uh, you need your, uh, your pencil and you need your handy dandy notebook and you're gonna need some paper for doing your homework. Straight edge of some kind might be uh, might be nice today. And do any of you have pretty pink spikes? <laughs> you might. I don't know if you want to do your work fast. Then and your your VLC, your very large cup, or very large coffee, or very large something else that starts with C. Oh glory! Okay, here we go. <laughs> Solving compound inequalities. Um, make a confession time. Uh, teachers aren't supposed to say this, but inequalities is really not my favorite thing to do. It might not be yours either. But um, yeah, if you want to finish this course, you have to do it. It's kind of like brushing your teeth, you know? Not fun, but definitely necessary. Um, I apologize, Mom and Dad, for how much I didn't do that when I was growing up. and. You know, you can see, yeah, it costs. So if you don't do what you're supposed to do, it's going to cost you big time in the long run. Let's get to it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to first off define a couple of things. There's going to be a third definition that we'll get to after this, after I clear the board. But uh, uh, we already know about inequalities. We got the greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to stuff. So we know that. We know the rules behind these things. Add, subtract things from both sides. Everything's cool. Uh, multiply, divide, something to both sides, it's all cool. Unless you've got a negative in there when you add or divide or multiply by negatives, you know you've got to switch the inequality around. Okay, peace out. No, no, we're going to do a whole lot of that today, but what we are going to do is we're going to take two expressions and sometimes jam them into one. That's why we get the, the saying up there, compound. We're going to compound these two together. So here's our definition. Compound inequalities are two inequalities combined with the words and and or. It's hard to say that without saying the word and and or in the middle. Um, and as well as, there we go, or. One of those, if it's all by itself, it's called a conjunction. A conjunction is one of these things that uses and only. And we'll have another one later called a disjunction that uses the word or it could be stated as um, a word problem. It could just be stated as an equation. Uh, it could be actually expressed as a picture, and you have to come and write the equation or write a statement that goes with it. You need to be able to uh, interchange those things and, and have all those, all those variety of skills. So uh, let's start with a conjunction. And OK, so here's where we have to use some math language. Because if we were in grammar class, we'd be singing that song. We'd be like, conjunction, junction, what's that function? Connecting words and making phrases and clauses. And, or, but, nor, for, yet. You know the list. But conjunctions in math involve two of these inequality things at the same time. In fact, if you look at this example here, we got negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. It's actually, here's one inequality, okay? And you can draw the picture for that if you remember how to do that from the other lesson. Then, here's another one. And you can draw that one if you needed to, but we have to draw both of them at the same time. We just need to find out where these two things are both true, and uh, and we've got our answer. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this all color coded here. Let's see how that goes. So first thing is I want to be able to read this thing. I want to be able to use uh, translate from math into English, which is a skill. Math is a is a second language. Okay. Um, I kind of want to start with x. I want to describe x. That's the thing that I need to know anyway. It's a set of numbers that was represented by this letter X. And uh, here's some information about what's true about X. So let me start off with the red side. 
x is greater than or equal to or equal to negative 3. And then here we have to use the word and. And then the right side is also true. x is less than or equal to 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture for each one and then just see where these two things coincide where they are both true. So let's do this first one here. x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So I'm going to put my circle at negative 3. Uh, it says greater than, so I've got to draw my arrow in uh, this direction. I'm just going to keep going. Uh, but it's also equal to, so I'm going to fill that circle in. Okay? Next, get blue. Draw this one right here. Less than or equal to 5. Okay, so we've got to draw our circle here at 5. It says it's less than 5, so I'm going to draw my arrow going this way. That's kind of like a laser bolt right there. Shows us like action. It's like... And then or equal to, so I'm going to draw that, that thing in right there. And you can see where they overlap is from here all the way to here, including both of these endpoints. It makes like a line segment here of uh, where our answers are at. So technically, here's the answer. X is greater than or equal to negative 3, and it's less than or equal to 5, and that's where those two things coincide. So the final answer will look like this. Filled in line, and both of these are filled in as well. Both of them are true. All that's true at the same time. Over here, only one of those things is true. Over here, only one of those things is true. Here to here, inclusive, all those things are true at the same time. Does that make sense? Nod your head like this. Go like this. That makes sense. Okay? All right. I might clear the board and put the next example up and, um, um, and keep going from there. Okay, the next thing is like they give us one of those statements, and we got to translate it into math, and then we're going to have to draw a graph. <laughs> they kind of rhyme math and graph. Just thought of that myself. Here it is. Here's the statement from the, from the example, and then we'll get moving. All real numbers greater than 1 and less than 4. We need to express an equation of some sort that says x is. Our answer is all the no real numbers greater than 1 and less than 4. Okay, so here's our magic word, and this must be a conjunction. We can write this as two pieces and then see if we can combine them into one expression. So all real numbers is going to be x, okay? x is greater than 1. I can write it on this side or I can write it on that side as long as the open side of my inequality thing is toward the x. x is greater than 1. Okay, x is also less than 4. Okay, so we can leave it as this and that, and then go ahead and graph it, or we can combine these things in a couple of different ways. Here's one of them. Okay, see if this is true. x is greater than 1, x is less than 4, but that kind of is probably not the best way of drawing it because uh, 1 is smaller than 4, so it might be nice to be able to read this from left to right and then see how that uh, kind of in the same direction that a number line would be. So this is also true, and this is probably the better way to write this. x is greater than 1, x is less than 4. Okay, so what would that look like? We draw ourselves a number line, we put a 1 here and a 4 there. Open circles because it's not also equal to, and x is between... 1 and 4. It's bigger than 4, but it's uh, bigger than 1, but less than 4. So we'd fill that in, leave those circles open. Both those things are true uh, at both those places. If we filled in that circle, that wouldn't make sense for that it's not equal to 4. And if we filled in that circle, that wouldn't make sense either, even though we could have drawn it like this and like this. But they said it's not equal to 1, it's not equal to 4, so we have to leave those spots 
open. Okay. Uh, the next example asks you to um, do a little bit more interpreting into uh, into math. Uh, example two asks you to solve conjunctions. I'm going to go ahead and skip that, and we're going to move on to uh, to disjunctions. Um, oh no, I'm, I'll go ahead and do do example two. I'm just going to jump down to the place where they've got they got it written as expressions. Okay, and uh, I'll talk you through this really quickly here. We've got that they say 30 less than or equal to. Okay, and then they got this expression 10 and uh, 0.10x. They said that's true, and this other expression is true, that this 10 plus 0.10x, uh, what's the rest of it? Is less than or equal to 40. Okay, so they got this whole thing about what is it? Cellular phone contract includes, which we did before. We talked about translating into that kind of language. So if they're both true, we got to put this thing. We can either we can do this. We can either like say let's solve this side first and solve this side separately, and then uh, draw both of those answers. And if we do this, we're going to do some of our like do unto one side kind of business. Take away and then divide. So we're like, uh, here's one of our answers. And then you can see in the book that one of the other answers is that x is this. And, and is still true. So we have to write a number line where this is true and that is true as well. The other way of doing this is kind of do it all in one step, okay? And that would be, no, I'll move this over here. Would be like this. And it's got three pieces, which might make it a little confusing, but all these things are true. These inequalities are true as is. So if we take 10 away from every single thing, we really haven't changed the relationship between any of these pieces. So if I subtract 10 from here, that reduces that down. If I subtract 10 from there, that's what happens to this piece. And if I subtract 10 from there, then it's like that. I can then divide everything by 0.1, and that gives me 200, gives me x, and it gives me 300, and I have one combined version of that previous thing. So that's a fine way to do it, too. I prefer that way. It's just kind of weird doing the same thing to not just both sides, but to every piece in the inequality when there's three pieces. Okay, I'm gonna clear the board again and then we're just about done. Changed a couple things up here. Changed that con to dis and I changed the and to or. And what we get here, a disjunction, is when one thing is true or the other thing is true, there's not gonna be overlaps. It's kinda like the Venn diagram thing here where we have a mutually exclusive type of situation. And if you look at example three in the book, write and graph and what they give you at first is they say is that all real numbers greater than nine or less than three so we're like okay x is greater than nine or x is less than three it obviously can't be both at the same time something can't be greater than nine and less than three at the same time no not in this universe so we're going to get a situation like this when we do draw our number lines. Circle on the number, but the arrows are going away from each other. And that would be the case here. We put in a 3 and we put in a 9. X is less than 3. And X is, or X is greater than 9. So the arrows go away and the circles are open because it's not also equal to. Uh, the, the last type of skill that you'd have to have is going from just an expression or even start with a graph and then write an expression. So if you look at example five, they have a couple of those where they say, here's the picture. This means uh, greater than, less than. This means equal to. This means less than. This means greater than. I think uh, the vocabulary should be pretty easy to figure out there once, we've, once we know what, uh, when we use and when we use or. Okay, so just drawing some pictures. Again, if you got problems, leave a comment in below or give me a call. Have a nice day.